Hello my fellow gardening gals and guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden here in central Minnesota in a zone 4B. So today I'm just going to be taking you around the garden, giving you a spring garden tour. We're just at the end of May here so there's not a whole lot blooming but there is a lot of highlights I want to show you in the garden. So I'll kind of slowly take you around on a relaxing tour. I'll do a voiceover because it's a little bit noisy outside today. And please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you like videos like this. Thanks guys, happy gardening! Okay, my garden friends, we are going to start in my backyard here, just in front of this little bed of irises. This is the first year that they're blooming, and I just love them. I put them in last year. A friend gave these to me. Now, I apologize if you see some flies floating across the screen. It is mosquito season here. <laughs> We're just adjacent to the wetlands, so we do get a lot of mosquitoes. So, here's my backyard now. As you may know, beyond these aspen trees, it was all buckthorn just a year ago, a little over a year ago. So we're slowly planting this up. So let me take you straight back here. We put this bed in last year. So the majority of plants back here are clearance plants that we got for like just a few dollars. A lot of the yellow that you see are spireas. We have four different gold nine barks and we also have some dogwood in the foreground there there's the majuga that's blooming that's what the purple flowers are but i'm really happy to see all the clearance plants came back really strong and they look amazing so slowly but surely we're getting this planted up let me show you what's blooming here I I think I showed you this last week. This is a pearl bush. This will get six feet tall. It's bloomed for a good few weeks, so it's just fizzling out here with these white blooms. Here are some of the nine barks and coral berry. This is kind of where I stopped the bed, just back there. I just freshened up that mulch. I still have to freshen up a lot of mulch, so. But I didn't want to wait any longer to do this garden tour. <laughs> Here is a salvia that I just put in. Really pretty. I think it'll do well back here. We have golden dogwood right here. This variety is called Garden Glow. And this is a snowball bush by Burnham. This will get four to six feet tall. We got these for $5 each at Lowe's because they were so distressed. So I have four of these back here and look at how great they look. These are spring bloomers. They look a lot like Annabelle hydrangeas from afar. There's another one there. These were very small when I put them in last year. So they could take some shade too. Here's the garden path going back to the wetlands. Let me just quickly show you what we have back here. I just put in all these hostas lining this path last year, so they're still a bit small. It's just very, very peaceful back here. I love sitting back here on a bench that we have, and it's just so great to be close to nature. We have a little burn pile there. So we just put in these Honeycrisp apple trees. We have two of them, and look at they are starting to leaf out. This is a Fuji apple. These were dormant and bare rooted, so I'm just happy to see they're alive. <laughs> now, because we had two honey crisps, we needed the Fuji to cross pollinate. This is a tamarack tree or American larch. We just put this in back here too. This will get almost 40 feet tall, but it turns like a bright yellow in the fall and it loves to be near the wetlands so it could take flooding. But it's just loving life back here. It's really put on a lot of growth. Okay, let me take you from a different angle here. These are my lilac bushes that I put in about, I think the, we're on our fifth year here. They were very small when I put them in. But they are blooming and I can't wait till they form like a full hedge back here. 
Smells amazing. This last one here is about seven feet tall. Has a little bit of deer damage, but very pretty nonetheless. And my showy mountain ash is just starting to form some buds. So these will have white flowers that turn into orange berries. I love this tree. It is gorgeous. We have some various plants back here. I'll show you in my next tour once they start looking really good. We have some sedums and some Millennium Allium. This is a corkscrew willow, golden curls. And I'm still working on this bed. I have to freshen up the mulch, but I wanted to show you this bed floods in spring. So we all have um, some drought tolerant plants back here. And some ajuga, we have some iris, a stilby, hosta, and veronica. Veronica loves moisture. We have some elderberry and back, which I'll show you a closer look. So this is kind of a work in progress here. I just transplanted some things. This is a columnar laced up elderberry. So it'll have the burgundy foliage. This gets six feet tall and two feet wide. So I have four of these back here. Just transplanted them. This is the Sutherland gold elderberry. It'll get, oh, about eight feet tall and wide. Really pops. I highly recommend these second year so they're still small might prune those into a tree form more ajuga here's another elderberry and this is my new cut flower garden slash veggie garden now it's very informal just so you know we are just leaving all those dead leaves as a weed weed barrier and let them break down into soil. I'll show you a little bit what we're going to do here. This is like the garden path right here, and I'm going to line that with gomfrina on each side. The gomfrina will line this back bed, and we'll have four rows here of zinnias. I have four different varieties. They're not planted yet. i got to wait a few more weeks till soil gets a little warmer. I'll put some tomato plants back here, and I have a few mounds for squash and gourds and zucchini and these cute little markers. <laughs> okay, so the back of the bed here, we will have Joe Pie weed that will be pretty tall, about six feet tall there. That's going to line the bed. That's some chocolate Joe Pie weed that's a little bit shorter. Since it floods a little bit back here in the spring, it, it will do good back here. This is a bridal mound, or snow mound, spirea. It'll flower white. Look at these spireas back here. They're really eye-catching. Highly recommend spireas, or just gold shrubs in general. Just for some contrast, that is gold mound spirea. I got that for just a couple dollars on clearance last year. Right there, that is a little spark spirea. That was a first editions plant. It's very pretty, the color that it fades to. I love that plant. Got some delphinium that will get pretty tall. And check out, this is my favorite spirea. This is the candy corn double play proven winner spirea. This plant was like bright red. A few weeks ago, then it turned orange. Now it's chartreuse with like red tips. It is just gorgeous. More delphinium. Another gold mound spirea. And this is string theory amsonia. So this is a spring bloomer that will have blue flowers. Okay, let me take you on the other side of the garden path here. This is Sun King Aralia. This does great in the shade. It loves moisture. It'll get to be about four by four feet. And it's a perennial. It dies completely to the ground. So 
I love that plant. It just looks so good next to this halcyon blue hosta. Here's an astil bee. And we have some chocolate chip ajuga that's just starting to bloom. I love my ground covers. The more ground cover you have, the less mulch. It's been pretty easy to control so far, too. Another huge astilbe on the side of that. If you want to know the secret to really big astilbes, they love water, so it's kind of boggy back here, especially in the spring. And I fertilize them just a little bit in the spring. And really, it's just all about the water. Let me show you this shrub. I got this on clearance last year, too. This is an ivory halo dogwood. It's gorgeous, especially in the fall when the stems turn like a bright red. I can't wait till that fills in the space. That was a really good choice. Another Sun King next to it. We have more still be. This one's a little bit lower to the ground, but it'll flower red. More chocolate chip ajuga. We have some Veronica in front. Another Sun King. And just in back here, we have native common elderberry. So it was already here. I just love that purple next to that gold. So you could see the elderberry here. Um, we're trying to just let it all just grow in and create a hedge. Another huge astilbe. I just transplanted these back here too, so glad to see they're doing well. Now to create a hedge back here, it's kind of shady, but we wanted to create a privacy hedge to kind of hide the neighbor's yard and the fence. So we dotted the area with these viburnums. There's a couple different varieties arrowwood viburnums mostly they will flower these white flowers you could see they're just starting there so the white flowers will be in spring and then they'll cross pollinate each other and then there'll be blueberries in the fall but these should fill in like maybe about eight by eight so we just started we had to start from somewhere <laughs> and this Gold Hasta is so eye-catching. It really pops. This one's called Dancing Queen. I'll do a Hasta tour in another video, but I'll show you a couple that are really pretty right now when they first emerge. Another huge Astilbe there. More Astilbe, more Hasta, some Majuga, and Viburnum pretty much in this whole bed. That's a humpback whale hosta there that will get like seven feet across. Here's mostly a hosta bed. That really pretty one in the center there is a Montana. Like I said, I'll do more in-depth on each plant in a hosta tour coming in a few weeks once they grow in. But I'll lead you up to my side yard here where we have a lot planted. I'm really just developing this area. So we have a narrow side yard, a winding path, trying to plant some ground covers. So I decided on this lamium, it's really pretty, and some creeping jenny just next to it, kind of brighten up that area. I dotted this all over. You could see some more sun king and various hostas here. This gold plant that looks like grass, that is sweet kate tradescanthia or spiderwort. This really pretty hosta that's just emerging is Liberty. Just behind it, we have cordial canary gold ajuga. That gold and purple together are, is just amazing. Very good ground cover. And it's not too out of control. That's a seducer hosta, proven winners. So we have these nanny berry bushes that will get about 10 feet tall and wide. Well, probably about eight feet tall and wide. We have the garden path and we have like a rock garden on the left. So we want these to fill in here. 
to create a privacy hedge, they will also flower white here in the spring. Viburnum lentago is the name. We just put in some blue arrow junipers. They are deer resistant. These get three feet wide and up to 15 feet tall. We just put these in yesterday. We're hoping that those quick fire hydrangeas in the back there will just grow in and create a hedge. And with these, hopefully it'll create some privacy here. We have some yarrow we put in last year. Those are the quick fire hydrangeas. We have some allium growing in there too, but this plant right here is a lupin. You may have seen this on my last few videos. It's one of my favorite spring flowers. And just to the right of it, this is gold lamium. With, it has like these pale pink flowers. You rarely see gold lamium. So I wanted to put some of that in there for some contrast. Very pretty there. These alliums are mostly summer drummers. They're okay. I need to give them another year before I make a judgment on that. <laughs> but we just repeated the pattern here on the other side with some more blue arrow junipers. And this is a dwarf ginkgo. It's just leafing out. You could see the little ginkgo leaves there. This is really pretty, like a little pyramidal tree. And we have another lupine on this side. And those are some irises in the back. So this is the view from the other side. We're trying to create a garden room here. So this hedge is Diablo Nine Bart. These will flower pink in the spring, trying to just create more privacy. These can get up to 10 feet tall and wide. I don't know if they will, but we have this arbor here with clematis growing on each side. That will flower soon. Now let me just go down the other side so you could see some of the plants here. Some are pretty unique. We have a lot of succulents, sedum. We have some miniature evergreens. We have mini hostas. There's even a cactus there, prickly pear. That's cold hardy here in zone four. The gold you see is scotch moss, which is actually a perennial. It's not moss, but it's just very good for a pop of color, some contrast. We have some sedums in the back that will flower in late, late summer, early fall, and some sempervivums that are cold hardy. This has been a really fun project. They're very easy to take care of. We have some Himalayan sky sedums in the center there. This gets part sun, and they're doing just fine. It stays pretty dry back here, so. As you can see, there's other sedum here. This is blue spruce sedum in the center there. Donkey tail spurge. There's even a miniature arborvitae. And just to the back of that, that's an ice plant, Delmara. They could take very poor soils. <laughs> There's a Semper Vivum in the back there. That's a really big one. Got that at Home Depot. More donkey tail spurge. And mostly just sedums and Semper Vivum back here. A little gold for some contrast. This is my little piece of paradise here. I just love this view. All right, let's go up by my front door here. Now, I was going to come out with a video this week of my annual containers, but it's still getting a little cold at night, so I'm going to wait till next week. You can see there's some lantana. I got a lot of tropicals, so... These are mostly shade or part shade plants, creeping jenny, coleus, caladiums, and I even have a banana tree. I cannot wait to plant this up. 
So I don't have my big pot planted yet. That's still my dried container from the winter. But as you can see here, I have some lemon coral sedum in the front. That's the gold that's kind of popping. We have delphiniums on both sides of the bird bath. And the white plant in the center there is called Senecio angel wings. It is so cool. It's in the Dusty Miller family, Artemisia. But the leaves are so soft. The delphiniums will get really tall. And back here, I have a clematis going up an invisible trellis. I have some fishing line plants there. Or actually, it's just nailed onto that post. Let me take you through my retaining wall here. There's just a couple plants I want to show you, and then we'll go up front because you have to see up front right now. So this is a little spark spirea, and just next to it, this is sweet woodruff. I love sweet woodruff. It is so cool. It's a great shade ground cover, and it has a cool leaf structure and these sweet little white flowers in the spring. I'm trying to, some, to suppress some weeds over here. So I highly recommend that for a shade ground cover, and it's not invasive at all. Here's two plants I want to show you that are new. This is Brunnera. I believe it's called Alexandria. And just behind it is some pink dragon lamium. The really light color leaves really stand out. So uh, I like having that there. This is my side yard that leads to my front yard, which I'm going to show you here. One of the hostas that really stands out here is this autumn frost, proven winter hosta. really emerges just really bright. Just behind that, we have some Japanese ferns. Sorry, I do need to weed. <laughs> and we just have a sunken aralia behind that for some contrast. Creeping Jenny really suppresses the weeds for me up here and brightens up the area. And it kind of just like leads your eye. You know, you like you want to just keep looking to see what else there is. This is a blue Hawaii host on front. We have some variegated Jacob's Ladder. It does good in the shade. Here we have some hosta and some more ground cover. This one is that cordial canary gold ajuga again. Just love it at the base of this tree. And we have some ground cover sedum. Now I got a pack here that just has a bunch of different varieties. It's going to get really pretty as the colors change. And different ones will bloom at different times. I highly recommend that. Really keeps the weeds down too. It can take really dry, hot conditions. And here is my front bed. Now I just came out with a short video of these crab apples in full glory, which I'll link above. It's just like a 40 second short. They're fading a bit now, but now they're like a lighter pink, but still pretty nonetheless. These are prairie fire crab apples. Now the white plants that are lining the bed in front are silver mound artemisia. And I have various alliums just dotted all over. There's some atlas alliums right in front. So you could see here we have gorgeous creeping phlox really stands out just a great spring bloomer in front of that that's going to be a short uh, allium called ostara just a, it's going to be maybe 8 to 12 inches tall when that comes in and i kind of lined the whole front of this bed with that shorter allium cannot wait for that to bloom i think it might be the last allium that blooms because as you could see, this atlas allium here is just about to pop. So exciting. I love this time of year. <laughs> There's some more atlas. And just behind this, this cool vase-shaped shrub 
is a mock orange. It has buds all over it. It's going to bloom white flowers in the spring. Gorgeous plant. Gets about like six feet tall, about four feet wide. As you can see, there's some smoke bush in here. This right here is a white meadow sage I just planted, this perennial. And this smoke bush, this gold, it's called a golden spirit. There's two of them in here, as you can see. It looks really good next to this Wichita blue juniper. The contrast is really nice. I have a lot of Talia daffodils that are just fizzling out in this bed, but this bed changes every few days. It's just so cool to watch. And these crab apples. They're just so gorgeous for a few weeks out of the air. If you look off into the distance there, there's this white plant that really stands out against the brown mulch. I really love it. I just put it in. It is a perennial, Artemisia. The uh, variety is called Valerie Finis. I'm going to put more of this in. It flowers yellow, but I just love it. And it does very good in dry conditions. I have Millennium Alliums that are just growing in behind the Silver Mound Artemisia. So those will show their full glory in August. Yeah, another week here and I'll, I'll show you guys all these Alliums. I got Globe Masters that are huge. I have six of those in here. Purple Sensation. Purple Sensation is this one right here. It's just starting to bloom. It'll get even more spectacular than that as it opens fully. But this is just a great view right here. I love the Creeping Jenny in the back too. More Silver Mound and kind of the pattern repeats here. We have a lot more perennials that are going to be flowering soon, and I'll do another tour soon. I'm just going to end the tour here on this last plant, which is a columbine. So sweet. I hope you guys like that. Take care and happy gardening.